there's all these people that think I'm in the Illuminati. <laughs> I've got this Omega reflector behind me. Someone's gonna like uh, try to divine some sort of reasoning behind why that's behind me. <laughs> it's like oh, over here's a triangle. Yeah, Illuminati symbols. Uh, <laughs> of course, I never denied it. Uh, veritas. Just kidding. As far as you know. <laughs> There was a comedian that would always do that. He would say stuff. He's like, you're all are wonderful in your own mind. Um, age of Reason. Uh, and I don't mean the original Age of Reason. I'm talking about like a new Age of Reason. And I'm certainly not against math. Let me first start out by saying that I have nothing against math. However, 99.9% .9 of you who took algebra and trig, you've forgotten all of it. Admit it. You, you've forgotten all of it. Now, unless you're going into electrical engineering or engineering in general, or uh, other particular fields that require a rudimentary understanding of things. What if the universe were so comprehensible that if you had the primer, and nobody has the primer, the guy that actually came closest to the primer, and he only got about 60% of the way, was Walter Russell. By the way, I have some, pre some suppressed works of Walter Russell. You know one thing that really pisses my butt off, and I got a lot of suppressed works. I mean, I have a lot of suppressed works meaning they are genuinely suppressed. They're not only not in print, but giving the information away is uh, a, a big problem. And I'm not going to define the word problem for you. Big problem, and I do mean problem. The guy that came closest to a primer was Walter Russell, by about 60%. He never defined a field. He never truly explained magnetism. He never understood uh, geomagnetic precession. He never understood fundamentally what magnetism was. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, his book on the Universal One and uh, a few of his other works, other than some of his esoteric stuff, uh, was uh, highly explicative of the nature of the universe. Uh, Nikola Tesla has a uh, scant little on field theory. Also is the case that the most field theory you could find is in the old works of uh, Faraday. Not in uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, uh, Oliver Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell. That's... no... Heaviside, Maxwell, no, field theory is, uh, at best, it's pure speculation. What if the universe were so simple? We, we, we work off these premises of, uh, you know, if you're trying to understand the cosmos, so you have to be an atomist or you have to believe in the quantum fairy tale of, uh, of and of course, quantum is atomism. By its very definition, quantum or quantity is atomism. Everything and all interactions are uh, based in, according to their illogical upside down brain dead uh, insanity based upon particle interactions what of understanding the universe only required a primer a primer would be like the rosetta stone you know what the rosetta stone was before the rosetta stone came along we really couldn't understand egyptian hieroglyphs we still don't the people out there that actually translate egyptian hieroglyphs uh, still have it all wrong but uh, they kind of got a rudimentary ability to read it However, when you read the translations, they're nonsensical BS, so we still don't actually understand Egyptian hieroglyphs. At least the idiots that translate it don't, but that's another matter. So we have to talk about a primer, and nobody has the primer. The primer is really so simple. I mean, if we were to find Mother Nature as a persona, which of course it's not, you know, we're not talking about a, uh, you know, a nerdy chick in high heels with a uh, uh, advanced uh, Western digital... Uh, a calculator that has uh, graph functions on it. We're talking about like a hairy armpit chick with like dirty feet who uh, <laughs> looks like she's smuggling hamsters underneath her arms. Everything is force in motion, inertia and acceleration, capacitance, resistance, permeability and permittivity, centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence. There are only two principles in the universe, the loss of inertia and increasing uh, inertia and acceleration. Human beings have everything upside down. We think of power. Just, just, just use the word power and energy. When you think of power and energy, you think like of an atomic bomb or like a massive generator um, lighting up a billion lights on the New York City uh, skyline. That's not power. That's, uh, that's the impotency of power. What we think of as power like an atomic explosion, that's not power. That's the loss of power. True power would be in that uh, two and a half pound lump of uh, U-235 or plutonium. Um, Neptunium is also fissionable. That secret was released in like 2001, Department of Energy, 
also found out that Neptunium was fissionable, which uh, I knew it was the case that it had to be before I discovered that. Anyway, that's not power. That's the loss of power. Everything is force and motion, inertia and acceleration. What if you could take a 14 or 12-year-old person and explain to them what a vortex is? Now, as simple as that is, I mean, really simple things. Like, what is a vortex? No one's defined. I define that in my fourth edition of my book, which is free, on Uncovering the Mixing Secrets of Magnetism. It is really simple, what a vortex is. What is magnetism? What differentiates out a magnetic field from a non-magnetic field on the same lump of neodymium iron boron or samarium cobalt or ferrite before it becomes a quote-unquote magnet? It's field coherency. But what is that field coherency? What is the geomagnetic precession? What is the reciprocating precessional hyperboloid? That sounds like fancy words, but they're not. They're just simplex field pressure geometries. The hypertrochoidal pattern that you see underneath the ferro cell. I knew that had to be the case before I even, even heard about and discovered the ferro cell several years ago. Mother Nature and field mechanics are very simple. Modern science, with all its great supercomputers and all its uh, assholes, and I have to use the word assholes very succinctly, people that are eschewing and spewing all this nonsense upon the minds of, uh, of uh, the masses, <clears throat> that quantum theory has any basis in reality, that uh, there are magic unicorn particles, basically. Of course, the, the photon, for example. There's that, everything that you take for granted, like the electron particle, Every intelligent person in field theory, including Nikola Tesla, Oliver Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell, they said the notion of a, uh, a charge-carrying particle, i.e. the quote-unquote electron, is bullshit. They didn't use the word bullshit, but that's what they said. J.J. Thompson, the quote-unquote discoverer of the supposed electron, he denied for quite the longest time that it was a particle. I mean, it's not. It's a, uh, it's a force vector of dielectric discharge. But he was offered the Nobel Prize, great uh, fame, and he accepted that it was a particle. Of course, it's not a particle. The notion that light is comprised up of other particles, photons. The photon is a purely, purely conceptual, uh, purely a human concept that has no basis in reality. Everything that we take for granted about understanding, nobody cares about field theory. Most people don't care about field theory because it doesn't get rich or laid, right? You know, it doesn't buy a fancy house. Nobody cares about that stuff. I care about that stuff. All the really important stuff, the big questions that have not been answered by modern science. Of course, they think they've answered it. You know, they've come up with insight. Have you read ever read QED Strange Theory of Light and Matter by Richard Feynman? That brain-dead, mental midget, that knuckle-dragging simian, he's now dead. Yeah, I think he's the one that said if anybody says that they understand uh, quantum theory is uh, is lying or something to that effect. I mean... Quantum mechanics has absolutely no basis in reality. These uh, notions that uh, forces and fields and charges and discharges have anything to do with, like, little particles. I mean, you really think that Mother Nature is just some, you know, crazy broad that's uh, got a bag of magic unicorn particles? I mean, do you really think the universe works that way? If I expel X number of calories to punch somebody in the face and uh, someone ignorantly in the sidelines think that that is a particle that hits someone in the face? Like, no, it was a discharge that actually energized my muscles, which went forward, and I actually had a, uh, a longitudinal vector of energy dissipation into someone's face. You punched them. In. If you said that was a particle, this is, this is what modern science believes. We're in an age of atomistic uh, nonsense that has no basis in reality. Ever since growing up, uh, watching all these idiots on field theory and how the cosmos works, black holes, the notion of the notion of curved space and time. Time is not a thing. Time is a measure. There is no such thing as time. Time is an arbitrary concept used to measure the passage of magnitudes. Time has no reality. Time has no reality at all. That. Uh, that fact was discovered far a thousand years ago, like the ancient writings of the rope snake. You should look up the ancient Indian rope snake analogy, where someone would actually die of something that didn't exist. They would think they'd see a, uh, a snake in the middle of the night that was poisonous, or it was really a piece of rope. It's like, how could something that doesn't exist cause something else to happen? These things don't exist. All of these particles, I mean, the uh, four Maxwellian equations for fields 
never define a field. They only define an effect over a period of time. Curve space-time. Space has no properties. Space can't act upon or do anything. Space is no different than saying a shadow. Time is only a measure. These things do not act upon other things, nor are they a basis for interaction. It's absolutely impossible to think that they are. It's illogical and insane. It's absolutely insane. Space and time are not things. Time is a measure. Space has no existence. There is no such thing as a goddamn photon. It's an arbitrary concept with no basis in reality. If you actually look up the origins of the word and the concept of the photon, it is purely an arbitrary concept that has stuck. It is a light quantity, a das Liquant, as uh, the idiot Einstein said. Now, when I call Einstein an idiot, let me refer to you specifically to Nikola Tesla, who specifically said that Einstein was a, quote, fuzzy-haired crackpot and idiot. Okay, so not only do I think that Einstein was an idiot, you know, the guy that actually invented the modern world, unlike the dumbass Einstein who invented nothing, said that Einstein was an idiot and a fuzzy-haired crackpot and a fool for believing in the space as something that acted upon other things. Everything in modern science that we're led to believe and brought up on is absolute bullshit. It doesn't even jive with simplex logic of a child. A child would go, that doesn't make any sense. You know, someone that doesn't have preconceptions like, well, so-and-so's professor has got a PhD hanging on a wall. Of course it's true. It's like, no. Every aspect of science throughout the ages has always been the case that 30, 40, 50 years later, every uh, new branch of science in the same field has said, well, those guys didn't know what the hell they were talking about. Now is no different. All we've done is we've uh, quantized and uh, atomized uh, cosmic interactions. You know, if you actually read the the assholes, and I have to use that word, assholes, who uh, try to explain fields, they will tell you that uh, like a magnetic field is particles, so we'll call it virtual photons. <sighs> Modern science thinks that nothing uh, travels faster than light, but light is not a speed, it's a rate of induction. There's no such thing as a speed of light. But they actually uh, cannot explain instantaneous action at a distance. It's impossible for them. It's been measured many, many times, countless times. But uh, they think that nothing travels faster than the speed of light, but light is not a speed. Like I said, it's a rate of induction. They can't even explain to you how light is able to speed up after leaving glass. Light slows down and it enters glass. It's, it doesn't slow down. It's a rate of induction because everything's capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. It would break the law of the conservation of energy to even believe in everything that modern quantum and science believes happens to light after it leaves a certain medium, like wi water or light, which slows down at different rates depending on the medium that it's passing through. But light is not passing through anything. Light doesn't move. That's something else Walter Russell got, light, got right. There's no such thing as a mo motion, motion of light. person in the middle of a pond flapping his arms is not moving towards the edge of the pond. He's actually setting up a perturbation in the water. Those waves are extending outward, but waves are not things. Waves are not what something is. A wave is what something does. It's a field perturbation. The only way to logically, intelligently, absolutely and irrefutably intelligently explain the nature of light is as a field perturbation. Is a rarefaction and compression in the aether. It is impossible to define or explain light any other way. The easiest way, and I've got a thousand ways to stump these assholes in quantum and modern science because they are morons. Well, you can't, uh, I got a PhD hanging on the wall. Who are you, you pathetic little? No, you're an idiot with a PhD hanging on the wall. A PhD hanging on the wall means one thing. You got one asshole who agreed with the person that existed before him. He's like, you'll read this stuff, study it, write a paper about it. You know, one idiot agrees with another idiot, and he gets a PhD. He's like, I've confirmed that you agree with my crap, and you've now graduated. You know, now you've got your uh, doctorate degree. Now you've got your PhD. That doesn't mean a person understands anything, can explain anything, nor has any validity to the accuracy of the nature of the universe or how nature works. It just means one asshole has agreed with what the guy before him taught him to believe. You believe this crap. Read this crap and agree with me. Okay. Okay. Now you got a PhD. 
doesn't mean anything. You can spend all the money at the colleges and universities of the world, but that doesn't going to make you more intelligent. It's certainly not going to make you any more wise. There's a thousand ways to refute these idiots. They can never tell you how light speeds up after it leaves glass. Never. They will say crazy crap like, well, once it reaches the edge of the glass, it springs off of there. It springs off of there? <laughs> what sort of insane BS is that? Oh, my God. That even alone breaks the law of the conservation of energy. Light doesn't move. Light's a field perturbation. It's a rate of propagation of the ether. That rate of propagation is called C, or the speed of light, but it's not a speed. It's a rate of induction due to the native dielectric permittivity and magnetic permeability of the ether against the ether because electromagnetism is transverse electrical magnetic, longitudinal rarefaction and compression, Pulse perturbations, which make up the coaxial circuit of light, which is my discovery, by the way. All observed phenomena of light can only be explained by what light truly is. The entire nature of the photon came about by the pulse perturbation of the longitudinal rarefaction and compression that exists within the coaxial nature of light. But if you're an idiot, like a hammer always sees everything as a nail. If you're a physicist or you're a moron in the cult of quantum, you see everything as a particle. We've got a magic particle here, interacts with another magical particle. You have idiots over at the Large Hadron Collider spending billions of dollars looking for magic unicorn particles. Mother Nature is a hairy armpit chick with muddy feet. It only works off the centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence, force of motion, inertia, and acceleration. There are only two principles in the universe. Force and motion, inertia, and acceleration. Everything is a pressure mediation. What does pressure mediation mean? It's like water going down the drain of your, your tub. You pull the plug, you got a pressure mediation. It means the water is going to find the lowest pressure point and escape out that way. Kind of like when you like eat a bunch of Brussels sprouts and you, cuss, you, you, know, you pass gas. <laughs> it's going to find a portal, right? <laughs> Modern science is bullshit. Everything you and I were taught was BS. The universe has nothing to do with particles and bumping particles. There's no such thing as a photon. There's no such thing as a charge-carrying particle. If you think that countless trillions and trillions of particles are rolling down the power lines outside your house like little BBs inside of an uh, aboriginal rain stick, then you're an idiot like everybody else. There's electrons flowing down them wires. Really? It's just, yeah, there's particles. Oh, well, that doesn't explain wireless induction, does it? <laughs> How do you end up charging your, uh, you know what wireless induction is? Yeah, you could place another induction coil in a complete vacuum chamber. Of course, you can't get a total vacuum, but, you know. There's complete wireless energy transfer. That's something else that uh, modern science has never explained. Well, it sets up a field and the charge is created. Oh, so there's no electrons involved, right? Because this other thing is sealed in a box and it's wireless. Well, no, there's no electrons involved. You know, it's set up as a field. You know, a, we got uh, induction going on there, is it? <clears throat> oh, so the electrons only occur over here once the field's been induced. Uh, so now you have to do is just ask them to define a field. They can't define a field. Modern science, in uh, no branch of modern science, has a field uh, in itself, of itself, ever been defined. A field by the four Maxwellian field equations is only explained, explained as an effect over a period of time with a given vector. But that only tells you what a field does and its effect. It doesn't ever tell you what a field is, because a field has no quantity. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles. And when you talk about physics, physics deals with physical reality. But you see, here's the bullshit that slaps them right in the face like a wet flounder. Fields are not physical. So you've got one branch of science, physics, which deals with things that are physical, trying to explain something that has no physical reality whatsoever. And the most amazing thing, like I said just now, is that everything is fields and fields are not particles. And fields are certainly not physical, yet you have the assholes of physics trying to explain what the, what the F a field is. And these people are brain-dead asshats. They're knuckle-dragging, pseudo-intellectual, mental midget scumbags who are only repeating the crap that was taught to them. Read this crap and repeat it to whoever you meet. That sounds like religion to me. I'm absolutely 1,000% certain that that S-H-I-T is religion. No, 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 it's science. No, it's religion. It's called the, uh, the cult of atomism. 
Lux Editas. The truth in Mother Nature is a lot more simple than scumbag scientists would have you believe. Because if you have the primer, even a 12-year-old, moderately intelligent 12-year-old, can understand how nature works. But nobody has the primer. But the primer is really simple. There are not four field modalities, dielectricity, electricity, magnetism, and gravity. There's no such thing as gravity. Electricity is five times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. means a hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism. There's only dielectricity and magnetism, and magnetism is the dielectric field. So ultimately, we only have one thing and one thing only. We have inertia, and we have the loss of inertia, which is as meant magnetism, the toroidal divergent field of force and motion, centrifugal divergence. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, and click the link below. Have a nice weekend. Bye.